We're on a river system. It's a Cree River. It's 125 miles. Wapata Lake is in the middle, and then there's another portion of the Cree River. So the channel goes right through the lake, so there's always fresh fish, lots of fish. Yeah, we're fishing a nice little weed bed here, just right off the edge of the current. Four or five feet of water. We've got the main river flow is just probably 50 feet out to the deeper channel here, and a few fish hanging in the weeds. Not super aggressive yet this morning, but uh, there's some fish and they're biting, so. That's oh, a big fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, that's a good Ooh. one. That's a good one. Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen, and in today's episode, we're the guests of Cree River Lodge, located in gorgeous northern Saskatchewan. We're on the hunt for huge northern pike, and if we're lucky, we may even have the opportunity to go fishing for some beautiful Arctic grayling. It's unlike any place I've fished before, and the fishing is on fire. Oh, that's a big fish. Got a board, oh, giant. Holy smokes, that's a big pike. Nice fish, big laker. That is a gorgeous fish. They're aggressive, they're angry. That is a fish of a lifetime. After spending the night in Edmonton, Alberta, the next morning we took a charter flight to the small town of Stony Rapids, Saskatchewan. It is here that my journey truly began when I boarded a float plane for the short flight to the lodge. Cree River Lodge is only 25 miles from the float plane base in Stony Rapids. However, Mother Nature threw us a curveball. During our flight, the skies grew dark and rainy, and our pilot wisely made the decision to turn around and head back to town. Thankfully, Cree River Lodge is prepared for these types of problems. They arranged for us to board a shuttle bus, which drove 45 minutes to the boat launch on the river. Then it was a quick 15-minute boat ride to the main lodge. I couldn't wait to get there. The mighty Cree River flows into Wapata Lake, and it is at this juncture that Cree River Lodge is located. We are truly in the far north of Canada, surrounded by boundless wilderness, wildlife, and peaceful serenity. While I love all the incredible, unspoiled wilderness, it's the giant northern pike that have drawn me to this wondrous region of Saskatchewan. And boy, are they plentiful here. The first time we came here, I was absolutely amazed, first of all, at the ease of getting here. Now, we come from Minnesota. We can take a nonstop jet to Edmonton, and then we can take a charter directly here. 
we got here, I have never seen that many northerns in my life over 40 inches. And it's kind of funny because you realize in a hurry that big northern you talked about before that was so big, you realize was not that big. What do I like about it? It's the best fishing lodge I've ever been to. My guide this week is Dwayne Cromarty, but everyone in the fishing world knows him as Chip. Chip has been working as a guide in northern Saskatchewan for over 30 years and is considered a true professional. Best of all, he is both a conventional tackle angler but also a fly fisher. Chip's experience of fishing, fly casting, and fly tying make him the perfect guide for my first trip to northern Saskatchewan. So what we're going to fish here is a weed bed that forms right on the edge. We're in 10 feet of water right now. We're going to kind of come up into about five or six feet here right away, and then it's going to be a band of cabbage comes all the way across the mouth of this bay. And there's a bunch of good fish that hold in this, so let's see if we can get a couple. That's fish. There we go. Whoa. Okay, okay. Ow. Let's see here. That's a decent fish. That's a very decent fish. That's a very I'm nice quite, fish. I'm quite pleased yeah. with the size of that fish. You can bring him on fish. this side. It's fine. Whichever side he wants. Whichever side. I think he's... Yeah, which, oh, watch. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. It is absolutely insane that we are literally right across from the lodge and we were able to catch northern pike this size. Oh my gosh. Oh, nice one. That is a nice fish. Ate your fly. But yeah, that's God. a good one. Look at that. It's a beautiful fish. Yeah. Nice. And that close to the lodge, that's wicked. Cool. All right, let's get this guy back in the water. Wow. <laughs> Is blown away by the beauty and diversity of northern Canada. It is such a unique and untouched environment, one of the last in the world. Today, Chip is taking us down the river to a location known as the Dunes. This area is laced with giant eskers, sand dunes left over from the last ice age, and something truly spectacular. This area is not only beautiful, but the waters here are also known for holding monster northern pike. Chip is quite knowledgeable about catching big pike on a fly, which was really a benefit to a relative newbie like me. He showed me the best way to set up my leader system for these massive northern pike, which have lots of razor sharp teeth. The pike leader does not have to be anything fancy. So I just use monofilament, I don't need anything too fancy, so that's, uh, I've got a spool of 50 pound, a spool of 25 pound, and then we've got some knottable wire. So, we'll start with the 50 pound. And at the business end here, tied to the fly line, normally, if you have a loop on your fly line, which most of them do nowadays, you just tie a perfection loop, like so. Overall, I like about seven feet. Okay. And you can go a little bit longer or shorter that, it's not critical. Uh, they're not line chai at all, so take about two and a half feet of the 50 pound. And we will join that to 25 pound. Now, the knot that I use to do this is actually, you can call it a back-to-back -back nail knot because you can tie it as the same way you tie a nail knot, or you can call it a back-to-back -back uni knot because it's essentially the same knot. Uh, for years, I actually thought they were different, but when you're done, it's all the same. So you tie it, that's tied like a nail knot. You see how you get that little figure eight spiral kind of a thing? Yeah. 
Now, if we tie it as a uni knot, which is the other, you know, just come through three times and pull it down. So you end up with exactly the same knot, even though oh. you tied it in a different way. So either one works just fine. I like to snug them up fairly close, but then you want to pull the knot down a bit just so it doesn't climb over top of the other one. Snug it up. And then just trim it up. And I use the same knot to tie the wire in. So there's really only two knots in the whole apparatus. Now we've got something like that. And we'll take the wire and we'll do the same thing. Make them nice and snug so you don't have to worry about them. And you can trim it right tight to the knot. You don't need to leave a tag because the line runs through the entire knot. So the tag is not essential to keep everything to stay put. There we go, we'll leave about, I like to leave 18 inches to two feet of wire because you use it up. You know, the tape of the fish and whatnot. Right. We'll, uh, and that's it? And that's it. Wow. And then the knot we're using to tie to the fly. This happened to be one of the flies that we had such success with over the last couple of days. But the knot we're using for that is a very simple jam knot. You just tie a knot into the wire like so. Tie a second knot, leave it open. Just go through there. Back through there. Pull it tight. Get a nice loop so the fly's got lots of movement. Good to go. Awesome. Now I got a six foot deep weed bed out here. It's going to be tough because we got a lot of wind and not much cover. But we'll see if we can get down into the cabbage a little bit and see if anybody's moving this morning. So just uh, try and keep it up fairly high. Like let, let the intermediate do its job. Don't worry about counting it down. But uh, yeah, just do what you can. We'll see what we can do. It's going to be tough. Oh nice. my God, he nailed that. Jumped out of the water. Okay, okay, okay. Trying to stick tight to my line. <laughs> oh no! no. Ah. I'm so upset. <laughs> oh my gosh. Try and get him on the line here, but I don't want to lose any slack. So, more worried about that than feeling up. But okay, let's you see, see here. Haven't seen it yet. Try and ooh, okay. Uh, don't want to reel up too much because I don't want to. Okay, okay, okay. That nice is one. Ethan. Watch out there, watch the line on the boat. Yep, I'll yep. be up there in a second. Okay. Just trying to get position. Yep. Don't think she's quite ready for me yet. No, not yet. I'm trying to get the head towards him here. Mm, she might Come on, still turn, girl. Have... Just turn. Oh, don't do that. Got her. There we go. Wow. That nice fish. Nice fish. It's a freaking dinosaur. It's a great fish. Oh Look at this thing. My God. Look at that. Wow. Look at that beast. That's an awesome fish. That is actually amazing. Nice work. Holy cow. Thanks, Chip. Well, we kind of got a zoo around here. We've got uh, moose, caribou, bear, wolf, bald eagle, golden eagle, porcupines, every kind of uh, animal you can imagine. You have your private cabin to yourself. Um, there's two rooms, 
four beds. So if we, there's a group of four, each person gets their bed. The bathrooms are right inside your cabin. Electric heat, so you don't have to be building fires. Um, showers and toilets right in, inside. We cook your meals for you. You come in, have breakfast. We go out, have a shore lunch at noon. Uh, we come in and have dinner in the evening. Everything's prepared for you. Um, you don't have to bring any food at all. Here at Cree River Lodge, you're fully guided. Um, we've got a variation of guides from the fly fishing to the spin fishing. You know, we have people with six to 35 years of experience, so they really know what they're doing. Yeah, this is my uh, fifth season here, and obviously number one is the opportunity to get a large northern pike. You always seem to catch fish over 40 with no problem at all. In fact, the first year we were here, we had nine fish over 40 with seven of them caught in one day. But what makes it even better is a place that's this far north in Saskatchewan has all of the walleyes you ever want to catch. Plus you have an opportunity if you want to go on the rapids and catch grayling, so you've got multiple fish species you can, you can hunt. Chip is known not only for being a phenomenal guide, but also an incredible fly tire. After having so much success using his fly known as Northern Magic, Chip offered to teach me how to tie it myself. I couldn't wait to get out on the water and test the fly that I had tied myself. Thankfully, I didn't have to wait for long. I saw that. That's oh, a big fish. Wow, that's a nice fish. Yeah, that's a good Ooh. one. And last last night, um, Chip showed me how to tie this fly. It's Northern Magic, a pattern he created. And so I'm actually fishing with a fly that I tied myself, which is pretty cool. Okay, really don't want to lose this guy. Yeah, keep good tension on him. You're in the cabbage there, so you want to have good, good tent, firm okay. tension the whole time. Okay. You don't want him to let. Get that cabbage okay. between the line and the fly and lever it out of his mouth. Okay. Trying to keep tension and okay, I've got him on the rod now. That is a very nice fish. Okay. Woo! Looks like I got it right in the corner of the mouth there too. Really taking that line out. Alright, buddy. Let's see if I can get them up here. Oh, they're so thick around here. Such good fighters too. Okay, okay, let's see. Chip, does it matter what side of the boat I bring it on to you? Um, preferably the other side, but we'll take them where we can get them. Okay. I just I have a lot of room on the other side, so. All right, let's see if I can work them back over this way yep, then. Yeah, there we go. Now just make sure you don't bring the fly line up into the rod. Okay, yeah. They have a bit of a knot there that would Man, I saw that my fly, I was just about to pull it in, but Chip has been reminding me to really let the fly come all the way to the boat because sometimes that's when uh, the pike will strike. And lo and behold, not even a foot away from the back of the boat, I watched, oh my gosh, that's a big fish. I, I watched this guy nail my fly. Oh, that's a good one. That's a gorgeous fish. Oh my gosh! Beautiful. 
That is an awesome. That's a beautiful pike. fish. The color here, like their spots, it's beautiful. I'm gonna go right about 40. That might be a better one. That might be. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah that's, that's feeling that's like a, good, a better that's fish. Good. Barely even stripped in any line. Can't tell. It hasn't gone anywhere, though. No. Whew. But it is going now. Yeah. All right, all right. Come on, buddy. There we okay. go. We're liking that. We're oh, liking yeah. this. Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't seen enough to tell you what it is yet. But... No, he's deep. Hide in there. That glare is not helping either. Okay, let's see. It's almost up the surface. Uh, that's a decent fish. That's a decent fish for sure. Yeah, that's a nice wow, one. Wow, nice. And I'd only been a couple uh, strips. I had changed up my retrieve. I was, instead of doing hard, short strips, I was doing a hard, longer strip um, and giving it a bit of a pause. And that seems to be working. We're using uh, intermediate just to kind of get a little bit deeper. Yeah, try and keep him away from the boat a little bit yet. Oh, he's got... Oh. Yep, you're okay. He's got some chunks out of his back there. It's a rough neighborhood. <laughs> Clearly. Okay, let's see here. Keep some pressure on. on him. That's a that's a nice looking fish. Oh, he's, I can never get over how wide the shoulders are. Thanks, Chip. Whoa, nice. But those are definitely otter marks, I would say, on that one. Oh, you'll be good. Beautiful fish, though. All right. Cool. Sadly, my trip to Cree River Lodge was coming to an end. Chip took me out for one more morning of fly fishing on these magical waters. There's another fish. Ah, uh, it's a good one too. Yeah, oh my gosh. Not bad. Another Not fish, bad. so I just, we just released a very nice fish. First cast back out. And here we go, another, oh, another really nice. Northern Pike, I'm gonna try and get him on the uh, reel. Oh, he's coming in fast. Let's see here. I feel like he may end up. Oh, that I think. This is a really thick one. There you go. Oh, 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 that is a gorgeous fish. Holy cow. Whoa, big splash. <laughs> They're so aggressive, active. Down again, down. Just, Okay. There you go. No, you're okay. You're okay. Come here. Come see Chip. Let's see here. That's a big one. Got it? That's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. That is a thick <laughs> fish. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that thing. That is so thick. Like I you can't really get your arms around it. No, oh, that's oh, a nice one. Oh my gosh. One. That's <laughs> a beast. Wow, how big would you say that is? Oh. Probably over 20 pounds. Probably awesome. Low mid 40s. That is a Very beautiful, nice fish, though. beautiful Big girl. Fish. Wow. Oh, look at that beast. That is a beast. Whoa, big splash. I've had an amazing week here at Cree River Lodge. The northern pike fishing has been absolutely outstanding. Those fish put up such an amazing fight. If you'd like to learn more about Cree River Lodge or our show, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. 
from all of us here at the new Fly Fisher, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Saskatchewan, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks.